Welcome everyone and thanks for tuning back in. We're going to get started with the wiring of this LED array. And the first thing I want to do, I want to use 18 gauge copper strand wire and I'm going to take it from the power supply and I'm going to attach it to the MyLite um, 2.4 gigahertz RF controllers. I couldn't remember what they were called. 2.4 gigahertz RF controllers. 18 gauge strand. Now when I'm going to come from the LED to the controllers it'll be all 22 gauge copper strand. And so this is just based on research and and uh, kind of an educated guess more than anything about the wire size you need. They're, it's going to change, it's going to vary uh, from project to project but just short runs it's called chassis wiring and uh, from the from the, uh, I'm actually going to have just a short amount of distance, so 18 gauge is way overkill for what I'm doing. And 22 gauge is probably even overkill for my LED strips because they're only in 6 foot runs. And that's the longest ones. The shortest ones are, uh, I don't know, I think they're about I don't know, 4 and a half feet, maybe 5 feet. I don't even think I really measured them. But let's begin. Everything gets a positive, and then uh, all the course, all the negatives get a black wire. Positive good red wire, um, negative good black wire, and uh, they'll be wound together and junctioned into this. So there's actually two outputs for power, two sides, and I may use both sides or I may just use one side. It really doesn't matter because I'm only going to be pulling about 23 amps with this whole thing. I'll probably split them up, but we'll see. Maybe put two on one and one on the other one. But let's begin. Anytime you're working with electronics, you don't need to use a knife or you don't need to use anything to score this to pull this off. You need to use a thermal wire stripper. And I have another camera set up over here and I'll show you that exactly uh, what I'm doing. You need to strip these back just far enough to where they'll go into the, the little con connectors. Do that for each one. Make sure the length is correct. So I'll be cutting and I'll just kind of speed the film up and we'll come back and I'll show you what I have. All right, so the the electronic thermal strip really makes short work of doing this. It would be really, really super tedious, and it would be incredibly difficult to do this and not cut a wire. That's why you don't ever want to use any, you know, mechanical wire strippers or anything when you're doing electronics, because you'll effectively cut your gauge down if you have a certain amount of gauge, especially when you get in those fine wires like 22 gauge and smaller. If you try to if you try to cut them with a knife, you're going to cut some of the wires and in turn reduce the load carrying capability of the wire. So here's the three wires. Let's get these attached. Alright, so now the positive wires are attached to the MyLite controllers, the RF controllers. And I'll go ahead and hook up the negatives, at least to the power source. I'm not going to attach them to this uh, as of yet, the actual RF controllers, because when you attach the negative leg to it and power it on, in three seconds you need to touch the zone that you want to assign to the controller. So I'll, I'll go ahead and attach it here. And then once I put in a, a power source, uh, house current into the power box, the, uh, the, the 30 amp, 12 volt power supply, I'll then just do them one at a time. So it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Alright, so to catch up on what I've, what I've done, I have a 3 LED uh, little piece, a little strip right here that I've attached to the MyLite. The, my lights are all uh, have the positive connections and waiting for the negative connections. I have my remote and I'm ready to push a button on it to assign a zone and I'm going to have half or you know whatever maybe half of the white lights on one zone the other half on another and then the RGB I have three strips of RGB on the third. So I just have to uh, assign a zone and what I'll do, these, this has two AA batteries in it or AAA, two AAA batteries in it and I just have to touch on the zone within three seconds 
of applying the contact to the negative post. So it doesn't really matter which wire I use. And I've checked the power supply. It's outputting 12 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the negative in. Actually just push it in and hold it. And then within 3 seconds, assign zone 1. Alright, so it's blinking. So now it, it's supposed to be uh, assigned. Let's see if I can turn the brightness down on it. And back up. Now, of course, it thinks that this is a... Uh, actually, I have assigned it to the white side, so I don't know what I'm going to say. Alright, so that's good. Let's see if I can turn that zone off. Okay, oh, off is the bottom. Okay, on. Alright, so that's good. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to unplug that just temporarily. I just had it pushed in with my hand. And I'm going to tin up. These are just temporary kind of uh, quick fixes. I'm going to tin up all these little ends so there won't be any fraying. I'm going to move this strip down here to assign zone 2 and then zone 3. Okay, so doing a couple checks. I wanted to show you where I have. I only have three little test strips. I could have cut off of another one, but I just left it. Zone 1, 2, and 3. I have the ability to turn them on. Now, I'm just, of course, just keep in mind I only have just uh, the white lights hooked up. They're capable of RGBW, which is if you had a strip that had RGB and white in it. But I'm just going to use them for white and uh, a standalone for RGB. So I have independent control. I can uh, select zone 1. If I turn zone 1 on, then I can dim just, uh, did I do it right? No. Maybe you have to do, okay, turn master off, maybe. Zone 1. Okay, there we go. I'm still learning. Okay, so zone, uh, oh yeah, zone one's here. I have zone two and three. There we go. And now, if the last zone you select, you'll be able to only dim it. Okay, so let's go back to zone two and turn it on. Yeah, see, now I can dim that. Now, if you want to dim them all together, you just turn the master on. The capacitive touch is a little bit trippy because you, there's no feedback. Uh, to what you're doing, so you just kind of it's kind of in. You just have to guess sometimes to see if if your buttons work or lack thereof. So I can turn zone two off, zone two on. Oh wait, that's off. Zone two on, zone three off, zone three on. Now since the last time I touched was zone three, that'll be the only one I'll be able to dim until I go back to the master, master off, master on, and I can dim them all. It's really cool. And mode, speed, I can change, I can flash, and I can do all that. Uh, and right now I'm just concerned to make sure everything works. Let's move on. Alright, so for the wiring of the LEDs, 22 gauge, I'll be using uh, RGB for, of course, the, the RGB and then white. I mean, uh, no, no, no. I'll use, uh, yeah red, green, blue, and I'll use white and black for the RGB just to kind of keep things straight. Black being negative, white being positive. For everything else, it would be red and black. And 25 feet of each. Hopefully I have enough wire. Let's begin. Okay, so I spared you all having to watch me wire this entire thing. It's not going to win any beauty contests, that's for sure. There's neater ways to do it. I would have loved to have drilled holes all through the top and ran the wires underneath but that was not an option for me because when I invert this and put it up flush against what used to be the hood area for our stove or our, our drop-in stove top the wires would be in the way it would cause rippled in the half inch ply, uh, plywood so it's on the surface but when it's inverted and, it's, and it, the lights are on it, it'll be a non-factor because it's going to be trimmed out you're really not even going to if you really tried hard, maybe you're going to get it. You look at an angle, you'll be able to see some of the lights at the side. And that's a later video, so stay tuned. I'm going to show you this installed. But uh, we're going to go through the checks. I think everything's wired correctly. And uh, let's, just, let's just look at it and see, uh, see what it'll do here. So I'm going to turn on the master, which would just be all the white light right now. Okay. That's at the dimmest. Okay, there's the dimmest setting. Let's go all the way up to bright white. And that, I don't know if that's coming through on the camera, but it's, it's, uh, it's nighttime here at my house, and it's, uh, I have to kind of look away. It's almost a, uh, you can't look at it. It would really hurt your eyes. 
So let's go through now. I have uh, three strips of RGB. One, two, and then three down there. And I'm still learning the remote. So I can use the color wheel. Let me get over here. And I turned off the, the Wi-Fi feed on my GoPro because it was interfering with my microphone. Or my microphone was interfering with the Wi-Fi. But I can use this color wheel and just kind of go through it. I can use the mode button. Let's see, what's that, what's that going to do? All right, just kind of slow fade through all the colors. If I hit it again, geez, that's bright. It's going to do like this heartbeat thing with the light. I think that's all it's going to do on there. Okay, let's hit it again. Okay, kind of the heartbeat through the colors. All right, there's a cool kind of a flash. So you can do that. And I'm on master. Keep in mind, I don't have this separated uh, with zones yet. I have three zones. So I can turn the speed up. I can turn it down by maybe if I hold it or, yeah, if I just hold it, the speed slows down. That's super cool. So let's turn it, let's just max it and see what happens. Oh, that's wild. Do not watch this video if you have a history of epilepsy. All right, let's move on. Let's uh, turn this down to, let's go to, let's hit the mode button again. Oh, wow. All right, so that's cool. So I made this to, like I said, it's going to be inverted and placed in, uh, over the top of our drop-in stove. And you're going to see that in a, in a later video. It's going to be part three of the series. And suspended below this is going to be a frosted sheet of one inch thick plexiglass, three foot by six feet long. It's going to weigh over 140 pounds. So mode button. All right, let's just check out the zone. Let's go back to master. Uh, how do I do it? I don't know how to do it. Oh yeah, I have to hold it down. Okay, and then bright. Let's turn it down. All right, so let's check out, let's just turn off zones. All the zones off, zone one. Let's go to zone three. Zone two. And if you, the last zone you select, you can actually, uh, the last zone you can select, you can choose to dim or brighten it, so. That's kind of neat. But, okay, if I use the color wheel, then it just automatically takes me back to RGB. So that's it. That's the showing of the three foot by six foot LED array with uh, the controllers, the MyLight three zone 2.4 gigahertz RF controllers. They're for the RGBW LEDs, and I just wired them like this. And I'll take the camera over there and give you a better shot of what, how I've wired everything. Okay, so uh, this is probably going to be a little bit boring, but I'll try to, I want this to be informative the best I can. And uh, I'll try to get through it fast, and I hope that the, the, what's in frame it makes sense. Getting right into it, this 30 amp, uh, 30, a 30 amp 12 volt power supply has actually has three outputs, three positive and three negatives of the DC 12 volts. I used an ohms meter and made sure that my output was, uh, I think it was end up being 12.5 volts that way because there was some voltage drop going through the MyLight controller. So I wanted to make sure that they were outputting 12 volt. They can handle up to 24. So I went ahead and turned it up a little bit and they're outputting 12 volts and I, I can run ohms meter everywhere that there's a there's a connection is 12 volt and i had to do i had a i had a craziest looking thing it looked like uh dreadlocks going all over the sink and, and i redid it because i was powering uh plus and minus out of these our, these uh controllers with each each strip because i didn't want any voltage drop and i knew that i was going to get it if i just powered one strip and then jump to the each strip that I wanted for each controller. So if that makes any sense. So instead of powering each individual strip with a positive and minus, minus directly from the controller, I wanted to clean up all these wires. I had wires everywhere, even more than you're seeing now, a lot more. And it was kind of a mess. So I said, well, heck with it. Uh, one or two voltage, volts drop, you know, I guess may not make that much of a difference. Okay, so I powered the first strip in the series of the each zone, right? And then by the time I got to the last strip, I had 1.8 volts drop, and I decided that was unacceptable, and I didn't like that. 
So here's how I resolve that. Coming off of this zone, it doesn't matter which one it is, it's irrelevant, but what I'm going to show you, power is this strip. Okay, power goes down in each direction. At the end of that strip, there's a voltage drop. At the end of this strip, there's a voltage drop. It may be minimal, it may be a lot, depending on how long it is. But I jumped here, and then I jumped from here all the way down to the last strip, okay? And then from the last strip, I started jumping back. <laughs> and doing so allowed me to minimize my voltage drop. And the same for that side down there. Because I even though that this strip right here is powered at the same location right here, this one's going to here, this one's going back up to here, I have enough jumps to where I'm not losing much, much voltage. So down here I'm at like 11.8 volts. And the same for, I think, uh, it's close to, everything's close to 12. So the, doing so allowed me to eliminate a bunch of wires and still maintain a reasonable voltage drop to where I could not tell any difference in brightness. The RGB was straightforward because I only had three strips. They're just jumped. This strip, the first strip, is powered by the center strip, as is the third strip is powered by the center strip. Just jumped across and jumped back and then power it right here. This is power. This is what's coming in off of the MyLight controller. And uh, I also added uh, I also added some white lights to the to the RGB side of the things, and that's it's really irrelevant because I just I just tied in some white lights. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's it in a nutshell. Just keep an eye on your amperage and just know uh, you know the, use the right wire for the job, and you won't have any trouble. I hope some of this was informative.